Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In the last few Lightroom videos that I've done, I've mentioned that I'm going to be one of 15 different instructors taking part in this year's Lightroom Virtual Summit. I'll be teaching three different classes during the summit. One of those classes, I'll be teaching everything you need to know in detail about every single tab that is found in the right-hand panel of Lightroom's Develop Module. Now, of course, one of those tabs is the Calibration tab. And in the past, on my YouTube channel, I've done videos on the Calibration tab. But for the Lightroom Virtual Summit, I was trying to think of a better way I could present the Calibration tab to you to show you how you could use it in a beneficial way in your post-production. Well, I think I've come up with a way, and I'm going to share part of it with you today. Now, of course, in the summit, it's going to be a full class. I'll be teaching all the tabs, and I'll go into much greater detail concerning all the tabs, including the calibration tab. But let's touch upon it in this video. Now, for more information about the Lightroom Virtual Summit, I'll have that listed in the description below this video. I just want to remind you that it is free over that five-day period of the summit, and uh, all of us will be posting our videos online, and you'll be able to watch them for free for 48 hours. Uh, VIP passes are also available. If you buy a VIP pass, uh, you'll be able to watch the video anytime you want, all you want, forever. Now, let's get into this calibration tab. Now, before I even open the calibration tab, let me just go over an image, any image, it doesn't matter. Let me put my cursor over the sky of this image and look over at the histogram. And you can see right under the histogram, there's RGMB. That, of course, t stands for red, green, and blue. And you can see there's some numbers there. Those numbers are given in a percentage. Red is 27.2%, green is 29.8%, and blue is 59.1%. That is the mixture of red light, green light, and blue light. When mixed together in those percentages, that make up the color that is directly under my cursor. Now, of course, if I move the cursor, those numbers change. If I go over a green tree, you can see we have different R, G, and B values. Now, what this means is, again, red light, green light, and blue light in a specific percentage, when mixed together, will give you a specific color. And as I move around, it's the color under my cursor, right? And let's say you had a wall that was painted just red, and you had a tripod, and you had consistent lighting conditions, and you took a number of different cameras from different manufacturers and took the same exact photo, shooting raw. So you had a Canon, a Nikon, a Sony, a Pentax, a Fuji, whatever. You had all these different cameras, and you just took raw images of this red wall, all taken um, with the same exact light. And you took all those raw files, and you put them in Lightroom. All of those those images, all that red in all those images would look different. That's because every manufacturer has what they call their own color science. When they interpret a color, they have to put that mix of R, G, and B to get that color created or reproduced. And they're all slightly different. And that's why a raw file from, say, a Sony camera doesn't look like a raw file from an Icon camera because that mixture of color is different. Now, one thing you may notice if you look at it now, let's say where I have my cursor, if you add 25.8%, 28%, and 57.6%, that's more than 100%. You might be wondering, well, how is that a mix? I don't understand. Well, let me try to show you with this little graphic I created. We have three 100 milliliter beakers. In one beaker, we're filling it with red light. Now, this is important. I'm talking about light. When you're dealing with RGB, we're talking about mixtures of light. Um, when you're talking about lab, L-A-B, that's for printing, you're talking about mixtures of ink. And also, if you're a painter or artist, you'd be talking about mixtures of paint. You're using L-A-B values. When we're talking about photography on monitors and stuff, we're talking about mixtures of light. So let's just pretend we could fill a beaker with light. So we have a 100 milliliter beaker filled up with red light, and it's basically 36 milliliters of red light. So that beaker is filled 36%. Then we have a green beaker. It's a 100 milliliter beaker, but it's filled with 42 milliliters of green light. Then we have a blue beaker, and it's again a 100 milliliter beaker, and this is filled up with 64 milliliters 
a blue light. And if you take all these different values of light and mix them up in a larger beaker, we get this specific color. And that's how that works. So you have these different percentages of light, colored light, and when mixed together, we get a color. Now I took this color and I put it over here in this graphic. And you can see now wherever I move my cursor, it doesn't matter. The R, G, and B stays the same because it's the same color throughout. Now what the calibration tab allows you to do, it allows you to tweak that mixture. For example, let me open it up. And let's just stay here for a minute. Now we do have a lot of different sliders and I'll go over these in some detail in a moment. But let's just say, right now, let's take note. Wherever I put my cursor on the image, red is 35.8, green is 42.4, and blue is 63.9. Make note of that. Let's just take, well, there's no red in here at all, right? But let's just take red saturation and push it to the right. So notice the color changed and look at the red, green, and blue mix chain. Red is 35.8, blue is 44.4, and, or I'm sorry, green is 44.4, and blue is 70.5. Because see how you could tweak that mixture with the sliders. Now, of course, I moved saturation. I could have just as easily have moved hue as well, and you could see the numbers change. So you could tweak things with the sliders. See how the color changes? And it doesn't matter. I'm moving red only because that this blue image that I have here obviously has no red that we could see in it, but there is red light mixed in there, and that's what we got. So we could go to green, same thing, like that. We can move these all around and get different values. And like here, now I'll go over the image and we have 26.6% red, 26.6% green, and 56.7% blue. So you can see how we have all these different values. Now, if you want to reset these, what you could do, let's say to reset the blue primary, you could hold the Alt or Option key in and you can see, click right there and reset that. And you can see it reset those as well. Or you can just double click. If I want to reset green primary, just double click on the two words green primary and you'll reset that as well. So it's a quick way you could reset these sliders. All right, now that we know all this different mixture of light and how you could tweak it, well, how does that benefit you? Well, let's go to this image, predominantly blue. And what I found is that if you want to improve an image, stay away from the color that is predominant in the image. So this image is predominantly blue. So we don't want to go to like blue saturation and move it up. It's just going to make the blues too deep. Now you could change the hue of the blue, and, you know, it can make it more cyan or more purpley or magenta. You could do that, but it doesn't really benefit the image. What I found is take the color that is not, that is least represented in the image and go to the saturation tab. And if you move it to the right, Watch like the, I want you to look at the rainbow and the trees. If I take red to the right, wow, look at that. I can do maybe green. There's not a lot of green here, but you can see how that kind of adversely affects the image if I go too far. So maybe I just want to move that a little bit to bring out the rainbow a little bit more. So there's before and there's after. There's before, there's after. Let's go to another image. This doesn't really have a dominant color, maybe a little bit of the green. So let's stay away from green and we'll take the blue primary saturation to the right. See how that just gives it more pop? There's before and there's after. Here's another one that doesn't maybe have a dominant color, but let's go to the blue again. Saturation with that to the right. See how it brings out the foliage a little better? You can, of course, experiment with the other ones. Move green to the right. See what that is. If you don't like the hue of a color, uh, you could try moving it. But remember, this isn't like the HSL tab where you're actually targeting a specific color and only that color. This is the mixture of color. So when you move red, you're not only going to move, let's say, let's do an out. If you move green, it's not only going to change the green, it's going to change the color everywhere because green is mixed in all this different color, right? Let's go here. Um, this one got a lot of green in it. So I'd stay away from the green primary maybe. You could go, let's say, blue. And then you maybe try the red a little bit, make it like really glow. Maybe that's overboard, but you get the idea. Here's one that's predominantly blue. If I move blue to the right, you can see how that is no good. You could change the, try to change the color again with the hue slider. But let's go to saturation of 
green. That looks kind of cool. Then we move red. It's maybe overbearing, but you could add a little bit. Or if you have too dominant of a color, you can move it to left, move saturation to left. But see that. Now, one thing I will recommend, if you have an image that has people in it and their skin, they're a little bit pale, and you want to give them a natural tan, go to the blue primary slider, move that to the right. And you can see how it gives them a natural tan. Uh, that is just a trick that us, you know, photographers have been doing forever since Lightroom came out. Uh, just take that blue primary slider and move it to the right, and you'll give them much better looking, healthier looking skin tone that looks natural. Remember, though, it affects everything, so you can see how it's affecting the palm tree in the background as well. So that is a taste of the calibration tab. Again, I haven't gone over everything in this video in the Lightroom Virtual Summit. I'll go over all these different processes and the shadows for tint and so on. But hopefully that helps you better utilize the calibration tab in your post-production. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. All right.